Hey, how's it going, Tavon? Thanks for stopping by, man. Oh, I see that the audio is working perfectly fine on string. Don't have to worry about that. You give me a moment here. I'm doing my last little post so that everyone knows that I'm live. It's going to be a little... uh chill stream I guess today be working on some comic pages and uh I don't know I guess just talking about anything that comes to my mind but uh hopefully you've been cool So that's going to post, and that's it. Alright, cool. Alright, I've been kind of getting a little bit of work done on this. Mostly I'm just working on the character art right now, going back and forth, touching things up. Me changing things around here and there, trying to get them up to the level that I want them to be. And I'm going to come back and do like the props, the settings, and uh, all that good stuff. So right now I'm going to just make sure that, like I said, the character art is good. Um, so I kind of made it to this page, and this is a fun page. I kind of wanted to give this kid a uh, slightly memorable face. So I'm kind of like trying to figure that out. Hmm. So I could go with like a hoodie. That could be cool. But yeah, um, I'm working on this off and on. Trying to figure certain things out. Maybe I should make the smell a little bit bigger. Have some fun here. It's got this really round in here. I don't know why I chose the shape for the uh, underside of his nose, but I thought it would be different. So, do that. I guess he kind of does. I will try my best to change that. In some way. for but not necessarily a bad thing either. Hmm. 
Okay. I like where that's going, kind of. something kind of set up for here, kind of like the first pose you kind of see him in here. Kind of just drew through the panel to make sure that I kind of got the right type of, uh, uh, how you say, uh, pose going on? Or more so like he's, he's stepping on the floor correctly, or the ground correctly. Yo, how's it going, Thero? How you been? Good, just chilling. We're I'm feeling about the dog brushes so far. Grab a couple of the pencil brushes while well back. Um, I like them a lot actually. Um, I got them a bit, I think, late. Like, I got some really early ones, probably the pencil ones you're talking about, and I thought those are pretty decent. And then later, like, I was doing a bunch of research on just good brushes and stuff, and they always kept popping up, and I was just like. I didn't find the first ones I downloaded necessarily that interesting, so I never thought to look again, but since I've made it back to this, you know, looking for brushes thing, I was like, okay, well, I'll try them out again, and uh, surprisingly, I like them a lot, um, which is why I have so many right here, though I do want to simplify my workspace again, because, well, I have a bunch of brushes. I downloaded a bunch of these dot brushes, and they're, they're fantastic. I feel like there's no point in using all of them, you know? Like, just find find the ones you really are interested in using and, you know, use them. Uh, I don't have that many stages of, like, my art, and I kind of like to keep my tools consistent. So, I don't really, like, particularly have too many I like. Like, to, like, like I like all the ones, honestly, that I, I even see on screen, right? I like them. But I know I'm not going to keep switching to them. That would waste so much time. So, in a way, they're there... But I want them to be in an area where when I want to experiment, that's when I'll go grab them. But when I'm doing a consistent process that I'm already kind of used to doing, I don't want them to impede that space. So I'm already feeling like I need to like make that and then move them away and just keep the ones that I really like. Like I feel like this one is decent for sketching and it has a nice little thing to it. So it's also good for inking and it's basically just a marker. So there's that. So I like it. Pretty good. to invest in some of them. I saw a comic artist on Instagram using them, and I really liked the textures he was getting in his 
ink work. Word. I think I was inspired to look for certain brushes because of, um, what's this dude's name? Uh, it's the, the artist who worked on Super Sons. I always forget his name, but he's a very talented artist, illustrator. Um, Jorge Jimenez, I think his name is. Uh, and I saw a bunch of the marks he was getting on his art. And I was just like, yo, like, how do you even achieve that? Like, you know. And uh, he was using, like, Manga Studio at the time. And, you know, I, n I never could figure out what the heck brushes he was, you know, using. But, yeah, Jorge Jimenez uh, inspired me to consistently look for the brushes he was using. Because he was definitely not showing us what brushes he was using. Uh, so... Um, that was cool. It's funny, you know, you, you look for some of this stuff sometimes and sometimes it's like you, you get gold and you're like, yeah, I figured it out. And then other times you're just like, I figured it out now, but what was the point? You know, like now I'm not even using them like that. It's an interesting thing. But I do enjoy a bunch of the brushes I found, so I can't like say that I don't. Um... They're not bad at all. Found some pretty quality brushes. And uh, yeah, paid for all of them, so. It's dope. We have some really good deals out there. I need to set up a button to to flip to transparency so that I don't have to keep tapping it. That'd be dope. New thing that I'm doing. I actually went ahead and like some time ago I went ahead and like changed around a lot of stuff on my PC and everything. Um, like make my process faster. So I know I'm a lot faster than I used to be. So that's gonna it's gonna help out later. Get further in this process but I'm working on chapter 14 no dialogue will be on the screen right now until I get to the next uh, the I would say the ending part of this process so yeah oh uh, Pepe Larraz was another artist you saw I used him yeah Pepe Larraz is amazing he's amazing I'd honestly like for both of them and Oliver uh, Olivier Coipel to record the process and release it. You'd buy it? Where? Same. I'd, I'd be very interested in seeing that. Um, man, you're bringing up uh, Pepe Larraz. That dude, so inspiring on his X Men run, man. I, I was just looking at that X Men run like, yo, I, I don't even like, like, I'm not even into like Marvel stuff like that anymore. But man, that stuff, that was great. Him and Hickman are amazing together. And uh, I wish I wish more projects come out for him. Uh, he has a really good balance. Like a lot of the, uh, I guess, newer top tier artists have this amazing balance of just great readability and uh, aesthetic. You know, you good aesthetic and you can actually tell what's going on. I feel like in the 90s, some of them had good aesthetic, but for the most part, a lot of time you couldn't tell what the heck you were looking at, you know? You'd be, like, looking at it, going, like, I think this looks cool. Some of this looks cool, but uh, other parts of this does not read as well as I would like it to. I hear a lot of good things from Hickman, and I think it's like two other writers who do really good job on Marvel projects. Oh, where? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not as privy to the other writers at the moment anyway. Uh, I don't want to blurt out a bunch of names knowing good and well that they could also work for DC right now, but. Yeah, Hickman, Hickman's has been phenomenal. It's funny, um, the guy who uh, Rob from Comics Explained is how I kind of got into Hickman, I guess. Because sometimes, you know, I check out, you know, stuff he's checking out from that channel. And then I would go, do I want to buy this book? Sometimes that's one of the easiest ways to, to get me on a project or interested in, like, new comic work from Marvel or DC. And uh, he's a really big fan of Hickman. And after paying attention to Hickman's writing style and how he kind of uses, you know, previous writers' uh, uh, stuff and kind of branches off of it, and it feels really good and cohesive, um, I'm like, yo, this is like the closest writer and to my knowledge in like comics that feels similar to like how like Oda does things in One Piece. And but it's you know, it's Americanized, right? So what I mean by that is it has less time, you know, uh, it is less time because, you know, you're talking about something that comes out, you know, weekly turn, you know, but cut down to something that comes out like monthly. You know, so it's, it's less time. So the plot points and everything and the beats of everything are a little bit cut down. But you're still getting the same type of handling in a way of the, of the story. Hmm, that's not good enough. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Trying to fix this. That's better. Same anything I know about Marvel stories from Comic Story and and Comics Explained. Word. Yeah, I haven't checked out Comic Story in very much, but yeah, mostly yeah, Comics Explained and just talking about it with my friends who are already into it, I guess. Um, I have one of my friends, uh, uh, you probably know of him or have heard of him, The Crocodile. He's very much, he's always reading something and uh, it's, it's interesting. He reads way more comics than I do. He also works on his own comics, but yeah, he, he, he's, a, he's like the friend that I talk to and who knows way more about what's going on in a lot of different spheres of comics. It's funny though, I'll put him onto something, but he'll actually go read it completely and I'll just be doing whatever the heck I, I am doing. And then he'll, you know, he'll come back and tell me about it and I'll be just like, that's awesome, you actually checked that out. And I'm always like, uh -huh. I knew about it, or I checked out, you know, volume one, but he'll actually go read the thing, and I'll be like, man, that's awesome. Or he'll go watch a video on it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Comics are still my favorite medium to tell stories. I think it's great. I just don't always have the time to. Hmm. I think I don't always make the. Yeah, I don't. I don't always make the time to go read more stuff. And uh, yeah, 
the easier I'll become in life. I understand. Oh, you. My list of comics and anime to watch keep growing. Yeah. My my little excuse is, you know, like, hey, man, a classic's a classic. You know, a masterpiece is a masterpiece. If I wait five, seven years from now, you know, it should still be good. It should still hold up. If I got to watch it, like, right now, just for it to be good, then it's not actually that good. I'm finally starting the Yu Yu Hakusho show from the beginning though. Oh word, nice. That's a that's a dope series. Um, I feel like it's up my alley when it comes to aesthetics. I kind of like this like modern slash shonen, you know, adventure action type thing mixed with a bit of darkness, you know, dark shadows and stuff, stuff that happens at nighttime. I like that type of stuff a lot. Um, probably because of the fact that I like the, um, Yoshiaki Kawajiri films, so, things that look cool at night, um, I'll always be probably interested in, to some degree. I guess darker series are interesting as well, because they, they talk about the other side of um, I guess, I guess a story type that mainly tries to stay on the light side of things, for the most part.
Yeah, it's gonna be pretty much just a chill stream today. Trying to catch up on some comic pages for the end of the night. Hopefully you guys are doing the same. If not, just vibing out. Destiny 1 uh, PvP. What do you mean? Oh, that's what you're up to? Nice. How was Destiny 1? I heard it was just barely okay. <laughs> what was it? What was it the other way around where Destiny 1 was decent and then they dropped Destiny 2 and it wasn't much of anything to offer, so they ended up making it free to play? They try to balance everything and make an eSport. Destiny 1 got better over time. Word. Yeah, the thing that I've always liked about Destiny is the aesthetic. Whoever was the, uh, the main artist on that when it first came out, who was ever doing the concept art, it 
they found a way to actually make that game look really nice. Or at least even the concept work, you know? Um, but other than that, I didn't like much of Destiny. I don't know much of the story, so I can't say. I do know that things in that game are bullet sponges. And it's to the point where, like, I've seen my friends play it and, like... Man, these enemies can just absorb bullets. Like, they shoot so many bullets into these dang old characters and they just... They just keep going. It doesn't matter. Makes me wonder. I wonder a lot. They beat you by att uh, attrition and waiting for you to reload at the wrong time. Besides that, it's literally shooting fish in a barrel. Oh, really? Man, that joint look, I couldn't do it. Look, I get it. Like, Warframe is obviously a power fantasy. Um, Destiny feels like it's a. I don't know what. Is Destiny a looter shooter as well? Or is it like a shooter with it? Like. Is it an RPG shooter? Or... I don't even know. I can't tell. I, I haven't played enough games, I guess. But Again, I played the demo. I thought, you know, it's cool. My favorite type of games allow me to use a weapon that isn't a gun. Um, guns are fun, but uh, I would also like to be able to use some sort of melee weapon. And if I can't do that, then... It immediately just goes downhill, in my opinion, like, of the game. Hmm. This looks a little wonky now. Let me see. Look at it again. AI will hide behind a box, get, get doomed, or dom, and another AI will blindly run to that same spot. Oh, word. 
It's like they're on rails. Uh, Destiny main lure was random rolls on weapons. Oh, yeah, trying to get like cool looking weapons and stuff like that. Or really dope weapons, I guess. That work really well in the game. I can see that. They pedaled. They pedaled back. Uh, they pedaled hard when it flops. Oh, they, they back pedaled hard when it flops. Oh, word! But it was too late. Oh, and D2. They got rid of it because because people wouldn't stop complaining about not getting God tier rolls. Hmm. I thought the problem with D2 was the marketplace. Like basically, people had. People had all their stuff from, from D1, right? And then when they got the D2, they thought they would have the same build, same stuff, and they would go forward with that stuff. But for some reason, they had to start from the beginning or something like that. And people were very upset about that. Like, they couldn't go back to looking the way they were, having the build that they had. They had to, like, essentially start over or something.
really sad though. Because Destiny has such a good legacy as far as like what people were expecting from it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people enjoyed it. I know that, you know, some people, like, there are people I know who still enjoy it. Um, still play, like, Destiny 2, but I wonder why they did that to it. Wonder what happened to the team who made, uh, well, I know what happened to the team who made, uh, what's the name of them, uh, Halo. They, uh, kind of got disintegrated out, essentially. Based out over time. It's really sad to see, but happens a lot at game companies. I think that's what happened at, um... Uh, the people who created Dead Space, you know? Dead Space is such a dope thing. I didn't know about Dead Space when that stuff was happening to them, but man, I eventually learned, you know? Not through playing it, because, you know, I don't have time to play a lot of things. But, you know, I learned about Dead Space, I watched people play it, I saw how things were set up in the game, and how things were triggered, and I was just like, yo, Dead Space... kind of a masterpiece, you know? Dead Space 1. Dead Space 1 kind of a masterpiece. Like, everything, not everything, right, but the whole, like, being in space and, you know, not necessarily being about fighting things in space necessarily, but having the setups be able to use tools, being like an engineer of these giant spaceships, you know, these space colonies or something, and you go in there in this, this horror game where you, the suit you're wearing is your freaking, that's your, your, your life bar and... It's so, it's so well made, you know, um, Dead Space 1 is so well made, in my opinion. Even from like a viewer standpoint, someone not uh, playing it at the same time, while seeing other people, it's, it's really cool.
So I notice, I've been noticing every time I use the lasso tool these days, I don't know if it's this file or maybe it's because I'm using this vector um, setup with a lot of my uh, my layers, I've been noticing that it kind of freezes for a little bit, it's uh, like it's taking up a little bit of extra memory or something, something I have to look into later, but it's interesting that it stops like... Uh,
was the fishing episode? What do you mean? Fishing episode in uh, the Divinity? Hmm. Fishing episode. There could be one. If there was going to be one, I would say it will be later. Could easily be in this arc, though. <laughs> every every protagonist must learn how to fish. I don't see a bad I don't, I don't see that being bad at all. Still need to watch the last episode of Memories. I counted Stink Bomb out too early, too quickly. Oh word, yeah, yeah. Stink Bomb's still worth checking out. It's pretty cool. It's also a really, uh, I would say it's a fun, interesting piece of artwork. There's an interesting uh, story going on in it and everything like that.
Yo, what's up, Tony? What's it been? I'm just over here cranking up more comic work. Not much, man. Played a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh today. Haha. <laughs> the game is perfect, in my opinion. Word. It's a pretty addictive game, man. It's pretty addictive. There's only one thing that's wrong with that game that most people who play it complain about, and that is just, it could be a little faster. It could be a little faster. If it was a little faster, it would be a, like a, a really, really good experience. But, um, for the most part, man, I've been enjoying it. I've been playing it a bunch. Unfortunately, my little, uh, OTK Exodia deck can't really get me out of Gold 4. I get I get to gold four and I just can't I just can't get further than gold four with that OTK deck because it's too inconsistent. <sighs> yeah, and the random bugs from time to time and chain blocking. Hmm. I don't know much about chain blocking, um, but yeah, I know about the bugs every now and then. Like my wife has a file on the switch. And this darn thing would be like, yo, you unlock the, you know, you, you can, you can basically unlock an SR and then it'll be like, oh, you never, you never unlocked anything in this pack. So we'll give you a free pull. Like I'll do that. And then the pull disappear some type of way. So I don't know if that's a glitch on switch, but I've done it at least four or five times now and not getting any reward from it. It's a little bit infuriating because you know, they are nice about it when you first start, but I honestly want to, like, if I could, I'd restart Yu-Gi-Oh! and destroy all my data just to get all those gems back to make the deck I want to make. <laughs> like, like, if I, like, I mean, I can do that, honestly, but a lot of times I think about doing that. Because the gems you get in the beginning, you could make a very expensive deck just off rip. Like, if you know you want to make a, let's say, Invoker Shadal deck, you could just go for it. You have the gems to just buy, you know, whatever amount of packs you need and everything else you'll get from random pulls and trade those in and, you know, get the other things. I don't want to go too much into that just in case people are listening and, you know, they, they don't know what the heck we're talking about. But, yeah, you'd be able to buy any deck you wanted to from the initial gems they give you uh from just doing like couple like what two tutorial modes they give you a bunch of free gems yeah you'd be able to do a lot with that i'll explain so imagine you have negate card right if i activate two cards on the same spell speed i can choose which card you can't cancel on yeah, I kind of I kind of understand some of that. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh way back in the day as well. That stuff was always it was always weird to me. Um, so it's not going to easily come to me just by hearing about it right now. But I don't worry about stuff like that. I try not to play too complicated. Um, though now I'm playing a more complicated deck than Exodia, so we'll see. shall see but yeah game has been fun
Mm. I love playing weird, complicated stuff, but it just doesn't work with so much. Well, TK. Yeah. I mean, yeah, people people can really kill you in Yu-Gi-Oh! on turn two, basically. So, sometimes they let you go first so they can destroy whatever you're doing if their hand is, you know, their hand's usually decent so they can go into a full combo and just take you out on turn two, but I would say, you know, if the hand's good, Yu-Gi-Oh! matches don't even last that long. Uh, they last about four, four turns, maybe six. Um, and then if things get super duper complicated, then things can last a lot longer than that because both players' hands weren't up to par or, you know, each, you know, things were put back to neutral pretty easily and the hands weren't really, uh, coming back the way they should or in the way they wanted them to, so... Things go into a pretty stale state of combat, just trying to get one up on the other, you know, on the other player. Quick deck build lets me coin toss. Let's me what? Let's me we the coin toss. What do you mean by that, Tay? Are you looking to play some Yu-Gi-Oh as well? Are you uh planning on trying it out? Yeah, there is a coin toss before every uh, every game, um, but the whole thing is like, you know, you can then select who you want to go. Um, like, if I win the coin toss, I can choose to go first or second. Um, and then based on how I know my deck usually runs, you know, I pick that and then I don't know what my hand's going to be. But then when I get my hand, I can see it, you know, like, okay, well, what's the best play I can make as turn one player? And then you have the person who's turn two player, you know, essentially doing a reactionary thing where they're starting off with essentially six cards while you start off with five. So you have to make the best move for turn one you can off of just five cards and the person playing second gets to make, you know, their reactionary play based off of that on usually their turn. And obviously if you have hand traps and things of that nature, you can actually start playing the game right along with the person, uh, you know, who starts first. You know, if you've got, if you've got like Ash Blossom and uh, what is it? Uh, I forget what it's called. Valor. There's a, I forget. There's a bunch of different ones. Um, Nibiru. Um, there's a bunch of different cool like hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh that you can activate if someone activates a certain something and. You can get something for it, so yeah.
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks fun. Alright, so, again, kid has, like, a hoodie on, so... I think I'm gonna switch back to my from my from my current deck back to Exodia whenever I feel like yeah whenever I feel like uh, I just want to do something different. Uh, one turn kill Exodia may not be as consistent, but it sure is fun. Hmm, what's this I'm listening to? I love, uh, what is it? I love, uh, Exodia Necros, though. Huge pain in your butt. Where Samsung has the dumbest spell checks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen any other types of Exodia decks right now. Like, uh, I haven't seen anyone at least summon Exodia on the field anytime recently. Not that it doesn't exist. Thing about Yu-Gi-Oh is like every dang on type of card you want to run, every type of deck you want to run, kind of, kind of, sort of exists already in the game, so that's great. So you can definitely do something with that. That idea you have. Now whether or not it fits in the meta and strong, that's different.
gonna go about five to seven more minutes on stream and then I will be out and I have to go do more things. Monster Reborn is the one true meta. Nah, they got cards that don't even need to use Monster Reborn to revive stuff. So that's another, that's an interesting thing, I think.
All right then. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. I think we uh, got a little bit done. It's not bad. I like some of these moments that I have, and other ones, well, probably all of these, I'm going to edit a bit, you know, before I get them to the final result, so. A lot of this is just, uh, you know, sketching on top of my thumbnails, essentially working my way into getting, you know, something like finished storyboards. Um, so right now I'm focused on just getting the poses down for... Um, the scenes and getting all the levels correct as far as like ground plane placement all that good stuff you know compositional elements with a little bit of uh, I would say attitude or emotion personality to them and uh, once that's there I'm gonna you know go ahead and clean them up a little bit more so that when I end up printing these out and using them for under drawing they have enough information for me to kind of feel more confident in my ability to give them even more personality and even more detail and things like that hmm. yeah um thank you all for stopping by today um really appreciate it um sorry i was a bit late but i'll try to do better next time i'll see you guys on friday at 9 p.m eastern standard time um if you guys would like to read The Divinity, the comic that I've been working on, it's up to Chapter 5 on Webtoon. Um, I'm obviously, well not, I, I gotta stop saying that. I'm working on a, a chapter that is essentially way further in the future. Uh, it's just how I do things, I like to plan ahead and be ahead of essentially posting. But um, I think this year, um, eventually The Divinity will catch up to where I need it to catch up to so that I can start offering uh, pages that are already done and completed. Um, as far as like it being further, like once it catches up to a certain point, I'll be able to essentially give you guys uh, Patreon exclusive um, access to chapters a month before I post up the whole entire thing. So if you're interested in being at least a month ahead of other people, um, look forward to that sometime this, this year. Um, but for the most part, yeah, um, I've been enjoying working on my comic, doing family stuff, playing a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! every now and then, and, um, yeah, we've been able to work on some things on stream today, and we've turned out okay. I'll see you guys on Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, yeah. Alright, everyone, get some rest, and I will too. Peace.